Hello and welcome to 52 Weeks. This week we're continuing in Chapter 5 Housing, and this week we'll be focusing on Part 4 Demographics. Initially this started as 6 categories, but I actually expanded it to 7 because of demographics. So we look at all 7 of them together. Part 1, the introduction. 2, the building typology. 3, building statistics. 4, demographics. 5, issues in housing. 6, observations. 7, building blocks of Harrisburg. One little subsection of this is looking at cars and housing. This is a sidebar in the comp plan. It's something to note because of how our uh, structure, physical structure is in Harrisburg. 76.9% of the city residents commute, 85% uh, average of state residents uh, commute, and we look at 44% resi city residents of driving age do not own a vehicle. This is interesting to see. You can look at the census tracts and the percentage that are there and which ones are high or low. Why is this something to consider? The fewest amount of privately owned transportation is in the Southside neighborhood and Uptown Camp Curtin neighborhood, and the largest amount of privately owned transportation is Bellevue Park. This coincides with most suburban style development within Harrisburg being Bellevue Park. So why is that all significant? Is to see how we can actually reconfigure our city so that it benefits more residents who may not have an ability to, to own a car as well as own uh, housing uh, that is affordable. We've got a plan for these two things. So this is where cars and housing comes together. The end of the sidebar looks at the 1974 plan focused on strategies to reduce traffic flow in the city. There are two primary objectives in the creation of a commuter rail network serving the region's uh, 1.7 million and that's a combined MSA of Harrisburg, York, Lebanon, and Lancaster. That many people that would be served in that area. The quote pulled from the comp plan, the U.S. is experiencing the beginning of a trend towards an overall decrease in private automobile ownership, although Harrisburg continues to have a high automobile presence in the city, possibly due to a lack of adequate commuter transportation options. If these are two things that we know, um, is if, if we know that uh, we're, we need to deal with housing and location of live and work and also transportation needs, uh, we could look at a couple of things. I pulled these out and from the comp plan as three things to be focused on. Housing planning should be coordinated with regional transit planning to provide a choice of robust transportation options that support car optional lifestyles for the city. Increased transit options should be coupled with reduction in parking requirements for new resident development to help with this and really focus on once we have a transit options, uh, we can begin to decrease some of the parking requirements from previous year zoning. And a third point is a more robust parking management for commercial areas, promoting ease of parking for visitors to the city uh, stores and restaurants is necessary. This is a good summary to see these things in context, uh, looking at the demographics and the changing nature of our city. Thanks again for listening to 52 Weeks. I hope this has been helpful. This wraps up part four demographics within the chapter five housing. Next week, we'll be looking at issues in housing. Thanks again and take care.